Hey everybody, this is Russ Buecher, developer of Control My Joystick. Let's take a look at curves. So a curve allows you to modify the inputs from your joystick or 3DX Wear controller before it is sent off to our Telescript virtual joystick controller and out to your game. So it's pretty flexible. Let's see how it works. So first of all, let's go to the input tab. And uh, on Control My Joystick now, I actually have three joysticks connected and one uh, DXWare or 3D Connection Space Mouse Enterprise. So uh, here under DXWare, if I just move the controller puck around on the uh, Space Mouse Enterprise, you can see that it is doing things. And if I were to uh, press some buttons on it, it recognizes the buttons. Okay. Now, for this particular device, and it's very similar on a joystick, you have curve groups. And by default, you always have one curve group. It's called default. A curve group consists of six different axes, or the maximum amount of axes that are available for that particular device. And on this particular device, it has six axes. If I was to go to, let's say, this really cheap joystick, it only has three axes. That's uh, X, Y, and Z is actually the throttle. So you could see now that if I was to move the controller puck around on the DXWare controller, let's say from side to side, it is moving primarily on the rotation around the Y axis. And you can see there is a curve in this curve group for the RY axis, RY, RY. And take note of this little vertical line here. This is uh, important because it's actually gonna split into two lines once we apply a curve. Actually, before I'm gonna do that, you see how jittery that is? I'm gonna go up to DX where, and I have smoothing, I'm going to increase it a little bit. And that'll reduce the amount of jitter but it will introduce a little bit of control lag. Now, if you double click on RY down here, it brings up the curve editor. Now the curve editor allows you to change different things about the curve. So for example, this is just a, a flat curve right now. The values that are coming in from this controller aren't modified at all before we send them off to the virtual joystick controller. But I can change that. If I was to, let's say, go down to curve presets here and select this one, now we could see that we have a curve. Now this is the very center and this is uh, to the left and to the right of center. So if I was to now move this, look what happens to RY up here. You see that vertical line is split. The top of this, and I'm going to try and hold it still here. Um, the top of this line is the raw data coming from the controller. It hasn't been, uh, it just ha hasn't had the curve applied to it yet. The bottom line has had the curve applied to it. And it's this bottom line data that is going to be sent to the output joystick uh, virtual controller. So, as you can see now, when I move this axis the, for a point that is near the center, the raw input does not match what is output. That is because of the curve. I'm just gonna reset this. Okay, no modification. So now if I move it again, you can see the line's perfectly vertical. There's no curve action happening here at all. So let's try some different ones here. How about a shallow? And I move to the left. And you can see it takes a lot longer to catch up this time. Almost has to go all the way to the edge before the output curved value reaches it. So you can use these curves uh, to maybe uh, make a axis more or less sensitive or respond in a way that you find you know easier to control uh, in game. Because some games will have um, the ability to to uh, mo to modify or apply a curve. But we find generally that a lot of a lot of games don't have that. Now you can manually modify a curve. 
So if you wanted maybe this a little bit steeper, you can just drag these upwards. And you can see these vertical blue lines seem to emanate from this imaginary horizontal line and go downwards. That means, uh, if you see that, that means that your output curve value is going to be less than the input, and that's the way it is right now. You can see it's always a little bit less. But you could crank that up. You can go like this. You see these, these lines are now vertical and going upwards. So that means as I go closer uh, to these on the edge, the curved value is going to overtake it. You see how it does that there? Even on this side. If the curve was flat, of course, there's no adjustment. So I'm going to bring up another curve. And you can see that when we modify our curves, uh, let's say this one here, it, it happens kind of in mirrored fashion. That, and, and that's due to this, uh, this check mark here. It's uncommon that you may want to have a, a slightly different curve to the left or to the right side of a controller center. But if you take off mirroring, you could do that. Okay, let me just bring it back here. So this is a curve that actually deadens the center then amplifies as you go further out. Maybe if you did not want to have to move the controller all the way to its physical stop to have the full uh, value of deflection, uh, that, is, that is handy. Now let's see what else we can do with this. We have uh, different axes here. So if I was to close this, and let's say let's go to the RZ, you can see we haven't applied a curve to this one yet. So let's just uh, make up a curve here. Okay, that's our RZ curve. I'll go back to RY. You can see it still has its curve. And you can flip between the different curves here with these previous and next buttons. And you could take a curve and you can disable it. It shows that it's disabled. So now no input from that axis on your controller will be sent through the tether script virtual controller to your game. And it could be that you have a curve group where some of the axes are some of the axes are disabled because you don't want to accidentally touch them. So you can also uh, invert. So normally here, um, if I move my hand to the right on the controller, it's going to the right. If I go invert, move it to the right, it actually moves it to the left. So it's a quick way to invert. Quite often games will let you uh, do inversion uh, right in game. You can apply trim and this is useful if you have a device that is always like leaning on a particular axis. So maybe it's just a cheap device or an old one, but it's definitely not centered anymore. And you could tell because the values returned when you take your hand off the uh, controller uh, will, well, they'll tell you that. So if I go up to uh, input, and I'm going to go to DX where show axis values. You can see here that they all zero, so that's fine. And I would expect that on one of these DXWare controllers because they're pretty high, high quality, but joysticks are another matter. So if I look at my joysticks I have, you, for each joystick you can right click and edit and tell it to uh, show the axis values. And on this particular logic, well, let's see. This pretty good T16000 joystick, you can see it's zero. So if I move it around a little bit, move some sliders, twist it, let go of it, returns back to zero and it's gonna track there. So this is good quality joystick. Let's take a look at this one. This is the cheapest joystick I could find. It was like $10, I think, on eBay. And that's a it's a something Thrustmaster knockoff. It only shows up as USB game controllers on the list though. So if I move this one around and move around the uh, throttle a bit, also pretty stable. Let's look at this. A Logitech Extreme 3D. This is the most expensive joystick I have, but this one has a problem. And you see, just if I just 
haven't touched it yet. It's showing minus four on the uh, TY axis. I'm just going to grab a hold of it and move it around a whole bunch and let's see where it winds up. Minus four, minus four. This is a poorly behaved joystick because if your game is very sensitive to the positions of those the TX and TY axis, you might find your aircraft is now uh, maybe rolling or diving or something that like that, even though you're not even touching it, uh, the controller. So what you can do is you can go to its axis and introduce a, uh, a trim. So it's like trimming an airplane. So if you go to, for example, TX, double click, and we'll apply a trim to it. So now you can see there's a bit of uh, variation in this particular line here. It is the raw data is leaning a little to the left, but the trim has brought it to the center. And the trimmed value is the amount is going to be sending to the game. Now it could be possible that uh, you also want to have a dead zone. So I'll go back to my DXWare controller here and um, you know, they're pretty sensitive. You just touch it and you'll have movement on the, on the, uh, the axis, but maybe I don't want that. So I, what I could say is uh, let's give it say a dead zone of 50. Now when I move it, I have to move it a little ways before it does anything. If I give it an extremely high dead zone like this, 350 max for this particular device, I have to actually physically move the controller puck at least three quarters of the way to its physical stop before anything happens. So the dead zone allows you to kind of ignore the inputs that are near the center. And sometimes you just, you might be resting your hand on the controller, but you really don't want it to do anything. Well, this is a way that you can kind of nullify those inputs. So that's an implicit, that's an explicit dead zone. We said we want a dead zone of 50 and you could do this on joysticks as well. But there's also an implicit dead zone. You could control a dead zone here. So I could do the same thing by just dragging these down and say, I don't want anything happening here, uh, right at the very bottom of the curve. Okay, so now if I move my mouse to the right, you could see the raw from where I'm moving my hand is fairly high, but you know the curved value hasn't even started yet. I move it a little further and finally catches up. So now you have a pretty good dead zone here. Okay, so I'm just going to reset my curve here and let's take a look at some other things we can do. If you go down to curve presets, you can also copy. So maybe I've made a special curve that let's say this looks like this. For whatever reason, this curve works. Okay, so you can go here to curve presets and copy it. Go to a different curve. Let's, let's go to uh, TX. and I could paste it. So now you have identical curves on those two axes. If you're to go back to TX and modify it, that's fine. It's not going to affect where you copied it from, which was here. Now this is a really weird curve. You wouldn't use something like this, but it's just kind of for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to bring a, a preset back about here. So this is my normal starting point. Whenever I do a game, I'll normally bring in just a very simple shallow curve. That makes a, a huge difference. So let's take a look at these curve groups. Let's say that on this particular set of curves for the default curve group, I'm going to reset them all. And for whatever reason, I want my rotation around the z-axis curve to have this particular curve. 
Okay. But that's when I am doing, say, default actions in the game. So what I can do now is I can create a new curve group. Let's say I need that R, Z axis to act a little differently when I'm landing. So if I go back to RZ, you can see here in this curve group, RZ doesn't have a curve applied to it yet. So I can just go over here and say, no, instead I want it to look like this. When I'm landing, my RZ has to respond in this manner. So let's look at RZ here. I'm just going to deflect it a little bit with this particular uh, landing. And you see its behavior. And now if I go back to the default curve group, behavior is different. It's because we have two different curves for that particular axis. Now these curve groups can be switched uh, depending on um, you know, a trigger. So you could have a button maybe on your uh, joystick or your 3DX wear controller or voice that says change to the uh, landing curve group. So you would set up a trigger and then for a script you would say, change curve group. Now this is DX where I have default and landing. So let's say I wanted to switch to landing. And I'm just going to get rid of these. So if you're on currently, you're flying around maybe on the default curve group, you run this particular uh, macro and it, uh, flips you to the landing uh, group, but you're gonna have to make sure that you have targeting on. And you see how it flipped you to it? Let's try that again. We're on this curve group, run the macro and it flips you. So now those curves that you have set up in the landing curve group are going to be active. Now this targeting here is tricky when you set up these controllers because uh, let's say I have it turned off and I'm moving the mouse around like this. Okay, no problem. But if you turn, if you turn it on, it's going to try to switch the focus to this targeted application. So I'm just going to nudge the controller puck a, a little bit here and there it brings up notepad. And now if you start typing or doing something, it's going to put it in notepad. Joystick is the same way because we want any inputs from the DXWare controller or joystick to immediately have curves applied to it and then sent to the TetherScript virtual joystick controller and out to the targeted uh, game. So whenever you move the axis, it's always gonna try to uh, go find a target and switch to it. So when you're editing curves, to make it a little easier, you can just turn this off. You can edit in game. And what I find is best is if you can run your game in a window and then maybe on a different monitor you put to control my joystick you can bring up the curve editor and adjust your curves and then go to your game and try flying and see how the curve feels and then go back and forth between control my joystick and your game until you get it just right so let's see what else we can do I'm just going to bring up this curve we also have these buttons here which bring it all up or down a little bit a little further Now let's take a look at the output that's occurring here. So if you go to the output tab, I'll close this and go to the joystick. These are the three virtual device drivers that are installed with Control My Joystick. Now of interest here is the joystick one because everything we do in the input here, the raw input from the axis of the DXWare controller or your joysticks, will have curves applied and the output will be sent here. So for example here, this virtual joystick driver has six axes and three of these things and a bunch of hats and buttons. If I wanted the input from my DXWare RZ axis 
and it has this particular curve, to go to my output, you just double click on RZ, and it's already actually there by default. I'm gonna say I want this output axis to come from the DXWare RZ axis. So now if I was to move the controller puck, you could see it. If I was to go back to the input, you can actually see the curved being applied. The raw input on the top, curved output on the bottom. It's this curved output on the bottom that is sent here. So this is what your game is going to see. This allows you to mix and match different devices to come together into one output driver. So I could use that RZ from DXWare. And then I could say, well, but I want my RY to come from my Logitech Extreme. And I'm just going to, uh, well, maybe that's not a good example. How about uh, TY? I want that from my Logitech Extreme TY. So now if I go to that and I start moving this around, now I have this source of access data going out to your game on the TY axis. And on this one, it's coming from your uh, DXWare device. So you can have several different devices all pushing data to your game. And you can bind these in game. If you just right click, um, you can actually do a voice bind or you just click on one of these. So if I wanted to bind axis left, oh, you need to have this set. And you can see how it sends these commands. Your game receives that and says, hey, I see input on this TetherScript virtual joystick driver, so I'll use that. And there's some options, there's both. Goes to the left. It goes to the right and then it centers. There's right. And you can also bind buttons. So this virtual joystick driver has the standard hat buttons and it has a whole bunch of buttons here, 128. So you could take one button from, say, uh, your controller, uh, my DXWare controller, and I'm going to just double click here, press a button on my DXWare controller, the rotate button. That's going to appear as my hat zero. I could take another button from my uh, Logitech Extreme. How about the trigger button? And so and now we have two different sources of buttons which will be coalesced together to go out to your to your game. And you can clear these. Okay, last thing to take a look at, and we'll have a separate video for this here uh, soon, is the digital joystick option. On either of these, you always have this digital joystick emulation. And I'll just do this on the DXWare one. Let's say that you're playing a game like Age of Empires or something that's kind of a, where you're overlooking a map and it's known as a WSD scroller. You know, you might use the A, a W, A, S, and D buttons typically to just to scroll around up, down, left, right on or over the screen. If I was to use this RY, and enable it for digital joystick emulation. That means I could tell a control my joystick to emit a keystroke to the game through the TetherScript virtual keyboard driver. So it, to make it look like uh, you're kind of holding a button down uh, on the keyboard. So let's try this. Let's go uh, A, R, down. And the positive is going to be D down. So uh, there is a separate uh, tutorial here, a tutorial profile it shows you a bit more information about how to do this. We'll have a separate video on this particular part because it can get quite complex. 
Well, basically we're saying anytime we have negative values on the axis, we send the A key, positive values, you send the D key. And a great way to test this is going to be with Notepad. So I'm gonna close this, enable this, and I'm just gonna bring this back up so we can see it. And I'll give it a try. I'm just gonna to move to the right. Even has this little pause, just like you're holding down the key on the keyboard. And to the game, that looks exactly like a physical keyboard. I'll go to the left, A's. To the right, D's. So that's one half of a WSD scroller right there. You just have to configure the other buttons, the other axis to uh, emit a keystroke for when you're going up or going down. Now the digital joystick emulation can also be used to uh, start a macro. So you might want it to do a whole bunch of things and not, not just send one keystroke. And uh, that's done a little differently. We'll look at another video about how to do that. So that's it. That is curves in Control My Joystick. Have fun.